40 million tons. That's the amount of global waste produced in 2014. According to a study by the UN, only 15% is recycled in an efficient and environmentally friendly manner. Dominic Lockman is the managing director of a German company that recycles precious metal from e-waste. That concept could work just right in Africa. Is that right, NT? With all the scrap we get from Europe, Joy, we could use some of that. Our Lockman's company offers a full service from collecting to sorting to melting and finally selling the refined precious metal. The focus is on sustainability. Let's take a look. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Dominic Lockman runs a business that deals in precious metals. The entrepreneur buys up old computer circuit boards. Contained within the thousands of discarded electronic parts, he mines for copper, silver and gold. The processors are the most valuable thing in electronic waste. A full dumpster may contain about 60,000 euros worth of precious metals. The waste comes from Germany and its neighbouring countries. Dominic Lochmann maintains close contact with his suppliers. To ensure profitability, he needs large quantities of electronic waste. Each of the electronic components contains just a couple of milligrams of precious metal. That means you have to recycle tons of e-waste to get any worthwhile amount of silver, gold or palladium. One of his business partners is the firm CR Recycling. It specializes in recycling electronics in an environmentally friendly fashion. Germany has very strict standards for this. The first step is to sort the scrap. Plastic, sheet metal, cables. Almost all of it can be separated and recycled. It's the higher quality electronic devices, such as mobile phones and computers, however, that are the real gold mine. This is your typical computer motherboard. The battery has to be taken out so that nothing happens during the shredding or smelting process. We're then looking at about one euro 50 per kilo, is that right, Mr. Hasenmeier? That's about right. Here we have a good plug-in board with nice gold-plated parts and without any contaminants. Here we're looking at about two euros 80 per kilo. That's why it's cost-effective for the company to dismantle the computers by hand. Cables, housings and circuit boards are carefully sorted. Old tube televisions and monitors are less valuable, even though the shielded cables are full of copper wire. But they also contain toxic elements such as lead and cadmium. In Germany, these must be disposed of properly, so they don't end up in the drinking water. Small shredders are used specifically for hard drives that contain data that customers want destroyed. Specialized facilities take care of the masses of material. Later, copper smelters separate the metal fragments and melt down the shredded material. It's a global market. That's why the disassembly can be done worldwide, as well as the flow of materials and the processing. Dominic Lochmann carefully inspects the incoming goods. He pays suppliers by the weight of the delivery and the current price of raw materials. His trading partners can check the company website for updates on quality and prices. And there's no end to the supply. More than 40 million tons of e-waste are generated every year. Recycling it doesn't only save money, it helps protect the environment and preserve natural resources. Unlike the wildebeest, the animal we're going to show you next has become rare. The rhinoceros. There aren't many left in Africa. With too many poachers and too little habitat, it's become very difficult to protect them. And that's right, Joy. But in Botswana, the authorities have joined with animal protection organizations and local town folks and local town folks again to create a project to help increase the rhino population. The rhinoceros is one of Africa's big five. 
animal species. Of late, they've been making a comeback in the Okavango Delta in the north of the country, as our reporter discovered. The Okavango Delta in northern Botswana is a unique ecosystem with an amazing diversity of wildlife. Fed by rainfall in the Angola highlands, the extensive grasslands and forests are a pristine habitat for large African mammals, including the black rhino. Here in the Delta, their numbers are growing again. With help from neighboring countries, Kai Collins and his team reintroduced black and white rhino to the wild in Botswana. Both species are in fact similar in color, but have different shaped mouths. White rhinos have flat, wide lips to graze on grass, while black rhinos have hook-shaped lips to pick leaves from thorny twigs. So South Africa donated a number of animals, and then uh, Zimbabwe donated a number of animals, and then we also managed to raise funding to purchase an additional tranche. So we've got a nice founder population of black rhino, brought them into the Okavango Delta with the help of the Botswana Defense Force, flying them in that huge military aircraft, the C-130 Hercules. And um, yeah, they've been doing extremely well. We've already had five calves, uh, so it's fantastic just to see a population uh, adapting so quickly. Between 2014 and 15, the project performed the largest ever cross-border translocation of black rhino. In all, 1% of Africa's total black rhino population was brought into the delta, although the exact number of animals involved has never been revealed. First, the rhinos were introduced to the different shrubs and plants of the area. Once the animals had acclimatized to their new environment, they were then finally released into the wild. But the project did not stop there. Scouting teams now patrol the area every day to look out for their protégés. Their mission? To track the different animals and check on how they're doing. Not an easy task as black rhinos are very shy. Black rhino is, is, is difficult, yeah, it's difficult to, 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 to find him because every time it's just go in the thick bush. The two rhino monitor officers are assisted by the rhino squad, a specialized anti-poaching unit of Botswana's armed forces who look out for the safety of the animals. With rhino poaching reaching astronomic levels, the army has made the protection of wildlife one of its main missions. Her name is Little Mo. The reason why we named her Little Mo, she got a hole on the shoulder here. And uh, Little Mo means bullet. When poachers came to chop off her horn, Little Mo was lucky enough to escape. She was badly wounded. That was in South Africa, before Leromo got airlifted to the Delta. In Botswana, she found a new home, and last year she gave birth to a baby calf. Boosting rhino population numbers is not easy, as females only give birth once every three to five years. The reason why I am doing this, if we don't protect them, our children will not be able to see this, because though they're gonna do they're gonna disappear or extinct the translocation came at a price eighty thousand u.s dollars per animal most of that was covered by ecotourism operator wilderness safaris and outside donations the government is now sharing in the expenses for monitoring since the patrols started the area has recorded no poaching incidents the Okavango Delta is, is the ideal place to, to regrow the historic populations. It's absolutely pristine habitat. I mean, it's rhino paradise and uh, very hard to access. Um, and so that gives us the ability to protect a, a core population and, and uh, be another one of the safe holds and strongholds for the species to continue for generations to come. While poaching is still a real threat, conservationists in Botswana are helping to ensure the survival of this majestic species. We're so glad we could bring you yet another edition of Eco at Africa. Should you have any thoughts about the show, be sure to drop us a line on our social media platforms. And from me here in Nairobi, Kenya, at the Ole Sereni, a big thank you for watching and see you next week.
Yes, see you next week for a new edition of Echo at Africa, brought to you by Channels TV, Deutsche Welle and KTN. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.